My previous video that featured the top 10 most famous shots from Efren, Bada, the Magician Reyes generated some interesting discussion on one of the shots. Efren used a drag shot with inside spin to pocket the 7 and bump into the 8. Did that go exactly as he planned? That was a tough situation. The shot is difficult and there are no reasonable safety options. And if he missed, he would likely have sold out the game and lost the match. In this video, I will show 33 different shot options from easiest to hardest and I will try to explain what Efren was thinking and whether or not he made the right choice. Although, regardless of what I think, Efren made the shot and won the game, and that's all that really matters. You should expect no less from the greatest of all time. This is what I think is the easiest and most reliable option. Just roll the ball with a level Q and no side spin and head up and down the table for the 8 in the side. Coming off the foot rail allows you to use a little more speed than with other approaches. This allows you to use a confident stroke and it limits any possible table roll off. This is still a difficult long and thin cut, but I think it is the best shot of all available options. And it leads to an easy out. With some of the options I'll show, it is important to understand the effects of hitting the 7 thin versus thick. Here, with a thin hit, you can see that the cue ball heads much more forward than with the true hit. The cue ball also loses less speed and travels farther. If you are going to miss the shot, it is best to miss on the pro side by overcutting it, since you have a chance to leave your opponent bad. If you use even more speed, allowing for an even more confident stroke and further limiting the chances for table roll-off, you can come up higher for a shot at the 8 in the lower corner. You can even come off the head rail. I left a long shot here, but there was a large margin for error with shot speed. I could have come up much shorter or gone much longer and still have a shot. Hitting the 7 too thin or too full here can lead to bad results. A full hit slows the cue ball more and changes the angle to leave a tough shot on the 8. And with a thin hit, the cue ball retains more speed and goes more forward, in this case with a very bad result. That's one reason why I like the previous option better. By using less speed and going off fewer rails with the shot, you have more control. Some players would be tempted to use outside to help spin the ball in and go off multiple rails for shape. The downside is, it is difficult to be accurate when using side spin over a long distance with a thin cut like this. Although, it helps that I am using the system for aiming with side spin. Saws helps me get an accurate aim to compensate for cue ball deflection resulting from cue ball squirt and swerve. Notice how different the aim is compared to the previous shot. You can go above the 8 by going off 3 or 4 rails like this. This shot also has two-way benefits, since if you hit the 7 too thin, you have a chance to pocket the 9 for the win. And if not, you can leave the 7 in a bad spot. If you use more outside and slower speed, you can go below the 8 off 3 or 4 rails. This is a good two-way shot, because if you miss the 7, you can leave your opponent bad. With less speed, you can hold for the 8 in the side. Softer shots with lots of spin like this are very difficult to judge. If you use too little speed, the cue ball swerves too soon, resulting in a thin or no hit. And with too much speed, the cue ball swerves too late, creating a full hit. With a drag shot and lots of inside spin, you can go off two rails for the 8 in the side. This might be what Efren was trying to do. He hit a shot a little full, and he might have lost more side spin than he thought he would have on the way to the 7. With a more accurate hit and a little more side spin, he would have come out perfect for the 8 in the side. With Q elevation, it is very difficult to judge the amount of swerve, and a long thin cut demands accuracy. Notice how different the aim is compared to the previous shots. Here, I am aiming well outside of the ghost ball target since the swerve will be significant. Another option is to use just a touch of inside spin to go past the 8 for a shot in the upper corner. That's a good two-way shot because if I had missed the 7, my opponent might not have a look, but I can still pocket the 8 if the 7 goes. You can use a little more spin and head straight into the line of the 8 for the bottom corner. 
This is what Ephron did, whether that was his intention or not. It is possible Ephron was trying to use his drag shot to attempt the hold for the 8 in the lower corner without a bump, given that the cloth he was playing on was slower than typical conditions today. The drag backspin requires more cue elevation, which makes the shot much more difficult, but the slowing drag allowed for a faster initial shot speed to limit any possible table roll-off. The swerve resulting from the inside drag also creates a slightly more favorable angle, resulting in less cut and making it easier to hold the cue ball. On this table, which is faster than the table Efren was on, it is very difficult or impossible to hold the cue ball along the line of the 8. Here, I hit the 7 full with good drag and slow speed, and I was still not able to hold the cue ball above the 8. But Efren might have been able to hold it on the table he was playing on. Regardless, as we will see more with the next shot option, bumping the 8 isn't necessarily a bad thing. It worked for Efren. Although, if he had been off with the line, even just a little, he might not have liked the outcome. With even more inside, you can go two rails past the 8 for a shot in the upper corner. It is possible this is what Efren had in mind. Did you notice that he hit his shot a little full? If he had instead hit it truer or a little thin, the cue ball would have gone past the 8 for a look at the 8 in the upper corner. And if he had missed the 7, he might have left his opponent hooked, so there are two-way shot possibilities. One downside with this approach is the proximity to the side pocket, where you can hit the point or scratch. With a touch more inside, you can safely miss the side and bump into the 8. The result won't always be good, but sometimes it works out. Here, I get a shot at an easy combo for the win. Here, I get a shot at the 8 in the corner. And here, I get a shot in the side. But, in general, it is best to not bump a ball that doesn't need a bump. If you use a lot more inside with a drag shot, which is very difficult to aim and control, it is possible to hold for the 8 in the lower corner even on this fast table. The large amount of swerve helps straighten the shot, making it easier to slow the cue ball after the hit. Did you see how much the cue ball curved on that shot? That's why it is so difficult to aim it accurately, especially over such a long distance. Kicking behind the 7 has several good possible outcomes. You can pocket it in the corner, and if you miss, you can leave your opponent snookered. It can also go on the side, although not easily. And if it doesn't go, there are chances to leave your opponent bad with the right speed, whether you hit above the side or below. You can also plan to play a straight safety by kicking behind the 7. Hitting this well requires a near miss of the 7, which is not easy. If you are that accurate, it would be better to just run out using any of the previous options. You can also plan to bank the 7 safe. If the 7 or 8 were in slightly different positions, you could also have a chance to pocket the ball as a two-way shot. The remainder of the shot options are much lower percentage and not recommended. I just wanted to include as many additional options as I could find. It is sometimes fun to practice challenging and creative shots. And in some game situations, they might be the only options. And some of them are just fun to pull off. Here's the first. With the right speed and angle, you can carry them off one rail into the 9 for the win. You can do it with a thin hit. Or using outside off two rails. You can even do this as a two-way shot while attempting to pocket the 7, in the corner, or in the side. But again, if you are good enough to hit the 7 at the exact angles and speeds required to execute these shots, you are also good enough just to run out using any of the previous options. You can also carry them off the other side of the 7 and go two rails to the 9. And if you hit the 7 thin enough, there is a good two-way element here. You can kick off two rails to pocket the 7. There is also a chance to pocket the 9, or both.
If you bank the 7 toward the 9, you can pocket the 9 for the win. Or you can pocket the 7. You can also bank the 7 off 2 rails toward the 9. Again, you can pocket the 9 for the win. Or the 7. Or both. If you double kiss the 7, you can hurt it into the corner. This obviously requires a perfect hit at the right speed. The remainder of the shot options are a bit bizarre, but I decided to include them without discussion anyway for your viewing pleasure. The 7 can be pocketed in all 6 pockets. We've seen some already, and here are the rest. And now we'll end with the most creative and unusual of the shot options. Enjoy! And I saved the fanciest of all for last. I will kick the 7 into the 8, and then off a rail and timed into the moving 8 to pocket the 9 with the 7. Nothing but net. I bet you would have never thought one simple end game shot could have so many options and involve so much strategy and decision making. For the greats like Efren, the thought process occurs naturally and happens quickly, but they do consider all reasonable options before deciding. This is about as long as you ever see Efren ponder a shot. It is possible Efren actually planned to send the cue ball into the line of the eight. A bump could work out well, as it did. And, as we saw, if he instead went just past the 8 on either side, he could also end up good. And passing the 8 on the rail side also has two-way shot elements, as we also saw. Only Efren knows for sure what his planning involved. This wouldn't be the first time Efren came up with a shot approach that was different than what most people would expect. He often comes up with creative shots for good reasons, and he is usually right. I want to thank everybody on YouTube, Facebook, and AZ Billiards for the great discussion and suggestions concerning Efren's options and his thinking. Good luck with your game from Dr. Dave.
Thank you.